Today we're going to do our second lab, which is measuring the magnetic field in And specifically today, we are going to look at uh, basically determining the um, total uncertainty of an experimental measurement and then our total uncertainty in our theoretical measurements. So we're going to be comparing uh, basically some of these equations that we've you know, worked with previously in uh, past problem sets uh, and see do our experimental measurements of our magnetic field, or do they overlap, are they statistically distinct, or are they statistically um, identical to our theoretical results as well. So lots of um, different uh, Helmholtz coils uh, are basically a setup like we've seen here. Uh, and we'll show that we've seen the problem set as well. So you have these pairs of magnetic coils. We run a current uh, I through them. Uh, if, so if you have a circular current, you're going to, in your right hand rule, you're going to create a magnetic field uh, basically like this. So your magnetic field like B or H. So we use, actually in my research, I use these magnetic fields and I create, I actually phase shift uh, between like this pair of coil and these pairs of coils. So there's a phase lag, a delta of about 90 degrees, not about, exactly 90 degrees. So basically I send a sine wave through this one, a cosine wave through this one for my current. So my current as a function of time is going to be that sine and cosine. Uh, those cosine waves T, sine or cosine. Uh, and that's going to kind of create these rotating magnetic fields. And I use these uh, ferromagnetic particles and they'll proceed to have a magnetic moment and they will roll uh, along with the magnetic field B or H again. Uh, they'll roll across the substrate. And I, you'll use that to basically look at these other non-equilibrium systems as well to measure biological interactions, uh, et cetera, et cetera, rolling magnetic probes. Uh, but you can kind of read more about that there. So I need to achieve, uh, to roll my ferromagnetic particles, I need a magnetic field strength of at least 10 milliteslas. So Bios of Art Law, so this is kind of, if I just have a general, a sing, you know, this loop of wire uh, running through it, where this at the center here, at the center of my coil, that is where x is equal to zero. And these are kind of other parameters, permeability of free space. R is the radius of our circular loop, and number of turns of the loop, I is current, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So at that origin, at the center of my coil, that's x equals zero. And then here's just some other distance, again, positive x distance going this way, negative x distance going the other way. So, but this is just for, uh, again, this equation is only for a single loop of wire. If I add a second loop, like we see here, again, we're going from x is equal to zero there. Also, x is equal to zero, depending on where you, uh, basically, uh, where you define your origin. But again, this would be, this is my distance. Here would be what? R over two at the center of my uh, loops. So if I make a Helmholtz coil pair, as we can kind of see here, uh, this would be, again, two times B is gonna be my function. Uh, again, at, this, is only, this only holds at the center. So see, I'm plugging in for X equals R over two. So we're gonna see, and we're actually gonna measure the magnetic field at different distances here or different distances here. So we want to use the general expression of just the B Helmholtz is just gonna be twice this, so it's 2bx. So we're gonna vary as a function of x as well. So um, I wanna create a pair of coils, so I have 500 turns each, so my nominal value of n should be 500. Let's go down here. Um, we'll look at more of those values in a second. In this lab, we're gonna measure the magnetic field, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Unfortunately, these are the details that we can't um, look at because we're uh, in remote land uh, from COVID, but either way, uh, the way that we would do this experiment, we set, this is how I send my signal. So I actually have, um, actually, let's look at the setup right here. So I generate my signal in MATLAB, and I have a data acquisition de uh, device that is a national instruments uh, device. So I generate my sine wave in MATLAB. So I uh, send it as a signal of, basically, this analog signal of you know, zero to one uh, kind of voltages that is then uh, sent to the DAC. The DAC converts that to voltages. The voltage then gets sent to an amplifier, amplifies that voltage or the current, and then that gets sent back to these coils, and then the field uh, runs. And I measure that field, or I look at the, kind of the signal, uh, basically the voltage as a function of time. It's going to be a sine wave in my oscilloscope. So that's kind of how the experiment actually worked. Uh, 
And what we would do if we were in class would we, we would basically generate our script, we turn on our amplifiers, we'd connect our vernier current probe. So we are going to be measuring the current I. So we're going to be measuring this experimentally. So you're going to get a, a list, a data set of current values. Uh, then we're going to connect that to the vernier. Uh, we're going to connect that vernier current probe to the vernier sensor DAT, and we'll measure that. Um, connect it to the end of the coils. Turn on the magnetic field. Measure it for 10 seconds. So we're going to use this expression. You're going to use these current values to calculate uh, basically a theoretical. Uh, theoretical magnetic field. And then we're also uh, going to use a, uh, as we're going to see here in a second, we're going to use a, a kind of a probe. These are going to be kind of like the nominal values effectively that we're going to measure. But we're going to measure that kind of experimentally. So we are going to kind of compare what the theory result gives us using these I, these experimental values of current, because we kind of need those. Um, but we are also going to measure, as we see in this Mathematica notebook here, where I'm going to pull it up right here. We're going to also measure using uh, a, let's see what you can see here. We are also going to measure uh, using basically a magnetic field probe. So that, that is going to give us directly the magnetic field strength. So uh, that was just, actually, here it is. The magnetic field with a vernier go direct three axis magnetic field sensor. So uh, we are going to kind of get into this Mathematica notebook in a bit, but we'll tackle that next time. So this is just kind of the preview uh, of what we're going to discuss in this lab uh, and kind of the procedure. So again, key ideas, we are going to forget about that. <laughs> the key ideas here, we are going to measure current experimentally. We are going to calculate a theoretical magnetic field based on these current measurements. Uh, and kind of these other you know, nominal values. And then we are going to uh, calculate the, we're going to measure with the kind of a magnetic field probe, the actual experimental um, uh, magnetic field and see if those theoretical and experimental values, they overlap. So uh, that's what we're going to be kind of doing today. So we'll see you all next time. And yeah, have a good one. Bye.